I'm Lewis, and thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe for more content. If you know someone who might like this video, recommend it to them and encourage them to subscribe as well. Thank you and enjoy the video. In today's video, we will talk about the modifications I have made to my Mike's Train House, Rail King, Aero Train, Locomotive, and Cars. I decided to make this video because of the recently released video blog episode 20 Instagram page which covered safety tips and modifications and cool things I've done to my models as well as the previously reviewed aero train and in this video I will explain some of the modifications you might need to make to your locomotive and to your cars to summarize what I said in the review the engine has some issues pulling more than four cars. So after asking around on various forums and Facebook groups, Gunrunner John gave me valuable information on the issues he encountered. Now this video is an informational video to help fix yours if you have any issues. The first thing that Gunrunner John recommended is that you check the rear truck and make sure the small idler wheel rolls freely. Also, make sure the rear truck is sitting on the track with the rear wheel firmly in contact with the rail. The common issue is that the little arm that applies pressure is bent and the rear wheel will have no traction. If that's the case, there's no way it'll pull the original three cars, never mind more. Continuing on, he also said that anything will pull better with more weight. My guess is the front truck is spinning while the rear truck sits there. A lot of the traction typically comes from the back wheels, which is why I emphasize them. For what it's worth, mine had a similar issue. It had very poor pulling power before I tinkered with the rear truck and got everything aligned and worked properly. Another thing to consider, you can always add weight. That almost always helps traction, and the aero train locomotive isn't all that heavy. So essentially, these models will have to be modified, and as a part of the hobby, you should know by now that you're going to have to encounter a lot of modifications. And that's what makes this hobby such a great hobby. Now, my aero train had some issues that included with the motor mount inside the body missing one screw so I had to get that fixed after I got it fixed that's when I encountered the issue with the locomotive not holding anything and my repair tech couldn't figure it out it ran perfect with some regular premier line hopper cars and when I got it back and pulled the cars something interesting happened and I will cover that later in this video taking advice from anyone is a great thing even if you're somewhat stubborn to take advice like me in these photos I will show you the weight added on to my aero train engine this needs to be done no matter what because a lot of people are having issues with their locomotives what I used was simple tire tape weights and they do sell them on Amazon however if you can get them from your local tire shop for free or for a lower cost it's a pretty good deal as you can see in these photos I've added some weights on the front behind the light fixture and some on the rear motor the total weight added was roughly 6.05 ounces MTH never thought that people would model the actual size of the consist. MTH expects you just to have the three regular cars it comes with and the locomotive for a small layout. I run mine on a public layout and I have six cars and a locomotive consist. I don't plan to go any further with my consist for now. The other thing is, with these passenger cars, the whole chassis is metal and the body shell is plastic. So these passenger cars are a lot heavier than normal passenger cars. And the reason why is, these cars use the similar 
chassis that MTH uses for the buses. A lot of the buses have a metal plate inside for a little bit of weight, but there is a plastic underbody. There are some advantages to this car being heavier, and the car is easier to take apart, meaning that the bottom chassis separates from the interior, which makes it easy to work on the car, add figures, and change the light bulbs out. This concludes this video. Like I said, this video has some general tips and common issues with the AeroTrain's pulling capabilities and every so often I help someone out who has issues with theirs. If you know someone who has an issue with theirs, share this video with them so they can get help. I would like to thank Gunrunner John because if it wasn't for him, I would have sold my train off a long time ago. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe for more content. If you know someone who might like this video, recommend it to them and encourage them to subscribe. If you would like to see more photos and videos, I have an Instagram account. The username is SDIV underscore Tim and the link is in the bio. If you're an O-Gage modeler looking for more exposure, American O-Gage is a feature page on Instagram where O-Gage modelers around the country have their trains on display. This also includes their layouts and tips. With over 1,000 followers and over 75 different contributors, we get a new contributor daily and we hope you can contribute to our page.